Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for showing up and for tuning in. I want to give a lightning talk as an introduction to Julia.jl, uh, not yet published package uh, for large scale open source electricity sector models. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the topic, what is energy system modeling? Um, Wikipedia tells us um, it's the process of building computer models of energy systems in order to analyze them. And so this is pretty much what we do and what we want to achieve uh, with this package. And one of the um, tools that um, are regularly used for um, this modeling task um, would be a mathematical optimization, and this is why Julia and Jump might be a good idea for, for this task. Now, energy system modeling can happen on any scope from basically global to a local scale, um, and uh, we're focusing on the electricity part of this, so only the electricity uh, system in it. Why, why are we doing this? Well, because it's relevant. So policymakers, decision makers actually um, rely on the outcomes um, of our models um, because they promise solutions. If just thinking about the system um, is not enough anymore um, and the models actually deliver numbers and those numbers easily become facts or perceived facts um, and they are then being used to legitimize decisions that sometimes are actually already taken but you need to legitimize them. Uh, the problem here is that oftentimes uh, those modeling tasks are not really transparent. Um, so it's um, closed source. It's not really clear what's happening inside of those models under the hood. Um, the tasks are very time consuming, very resource consuming because you need lots of data and the models are sometimes really big. Um, and to some people, it's actually somehow mystical. And um, we want to change this, and this is why uh, we want to go more into open modeling. Now, why do we need open modeling? There's actually a paper by Stefan Fenninger and others, um, and they argue that there are four uh, important topics why you should be open in your models and in your data. So one of it is improved quality. Obviously, if others can uh, check what's happening inside your model, they uh, can validate and they can replicate, and they could also find out um, how your assumptions actually affect um, your outcomes. There will be more effective collaboration um, between science and policy, um, and there will be increased productivity because um, in a non-open um, way, you always have to recreate your own data, you have to recreate your own models, so everyone who's starting uh, his or her PhD in the topic in the field will um, do the same thing over and over again. So being open means others can reuse the stuff and therefore be uh, more productive. And obviously, there will be a profound relevance um, to societal debates. I want to add one point here. Um, it's uh, future-proof teaching. So we actually use those models in some of our courses. And if we just use proprietary software uh, to model, then uh, the students can only use it in the course. And once they don't have a license anymore, it's not so useful for them. So this is why with uh, Julia.jl, we want to move um, to what we call a 5D open approach, so five dimensions. That is, um, the model code has to be open source. It's already the case for our models. Um, but we also want to use an open source modeling language. Um, we want to prove that it's possible to use open source solvers as well. And we obviously only want to work with open data and not some data that comes from um, companies that others can't uh, use, at least not legally. Um, and all the outcomes, at least we want to publish in open access journals um, so that uh, people don't have to pay um, for the outcomes. Now, we already, as I said, have uh, an open source model, so you can download the code for this model. This is an uh, electricity market model for Germany. It's called LMOD, so electricity market model. Um, and it's just a linear program. So it's not very complex um, in terms of what's happening under the hood here. It's written in GAMS, so you actually need the software GAMS, you need a license, uh, because already a very small number of variables um, is enough uh, so that you can't use GAMS um, anymore without a license. Um, the whole model can calculate uh, one year, so 8,760 hours um, of uh, power plant dispatch. It has a block sharp representation of the conventional um, power plant portfolio that we have in Germany. Um, it has pump storage power plants um, implemented. It has a nodal energy balance, um, and it actually has the whole transmission grid um, of Germany implemented. And it, um, it uses the so-called DC load flow approach, so it's actually a linear power flow approximation um, in order to calculate uh, nodal energy balances. The data that we're using is also already open, so you can access that. It's um, actually dropped in the Zenodo repository. Um, it consists of load data, cross-border flows, conventional generation capacities, actually more than 700 power plant blocks, 
uh, renewable generation and availabilities, um, CO2 prices, fuel prices, and the full German transmission network, uh, which consists in our case of 450 nodes and more than 700 lines and even more circuits than that. So you could say, okay, everything is already open. What am I talking about? Well, what's missing here is actually um, that we're not using an open source modeling language. Um, and this is why um, about two years ago when we heard about Julia, we thought about couldn't we move there and um, see how that works. Before that, this is how our conventional modeling workflow would look like. So uh, we would use Excel, yes, and or Python for data pre-processing and then GAMS for the model formulation. This would be sent to the solver. We get the raw results back and then we need to um, post-process them again using Excel or Python. So um, we actually have um, breaks between software here. And with Julia, we have the major advantage or one of the major advantages already, we can do all of this workflow within the same language. We need, don't have to have any switches and we can automate uh, many things. So um, if we do this, uh, this is how, for example, um, it could look like we can, we can use the plotting functions of Julia. We can um, plot a very nice um, dispatch graph here for an exemplary week. We can use um, the geocoded data uh, to plot, for example, location and marginal prices for Germany. We can show how the transmission grid is utilized um, in a very nice plot. Um, and so those are already many advantages that we can use in Julia. If we look at the model, um, it consists of a little bit more than 600,000 um, equations, uh, 4.2 single variable, 4.2 million single variables uh, for each week uh, of the year. Um, that gives us more than five uh, million non-zero elements and the model size about one and a half gigabytes. Um, as I said, it's a linear program. So we wanted to see what happens if we use this in Julia compared to what we're doing now in GAMS. And so we did a little benchmarking, um, the build time and solve time uh, with Julia and JUMP versus GAMS and commercial solvers versus open source solvers. And this is just uh, because it's a lightning talk, just a very short insight here. We can see um, on the left hand side, uh, those are the GAMS implementations and on the right hand side, the Julia Jump implementations uh, combined with different commercial and actually um, one open source solver ECOS. And what we can see here is that um, it's definitely not a problem to use Julia Jump in combination with commercial solvers. Um, we actually get better results here. Um, and we can also see that the, um, the time that we need uh, to build and solve one week uh, doesn't spread as much as it does actually in GAMS. So Groby is still a little bit faster in GAMS uh, than in Julia in our case, uh, but you can also see that ECOS as the open source solver is kind of within the same order of magnitude. So it's reasonable um, to use that. There will be more details um, about the benchmarking in an upcoming paper that uh, we're about to finalize. Um, as a short conclusion and outlook, um, what will Julia JL actually be able to do? Um, there will be some kind of generic data structure, so it will be clear um, how your data needs to be prepared in order to uh, throw it at uh, the package. Um, we hope that we can uh, somehow standardize this also for other applications. It will be able to do uh, the least cost simple uh, dispatch as an LP that I've just shown here. Um, it will have the location and marginal pricing using um, this DCLF approach, so the linearized power flow but there will also be a two market setup. Um, so you will also have the op uh, opportunity to have congestion management implemented. There will be a unit commitment. So that's the mixed integer formulation of the problem here. So ramping constraints um, and so on for, um, for the conventional power plants, minimum on and off time and so on. Um, and uh, the heat sector will be integrated. Um, so combined heat and power plants as well as others. And we want to have a parallelization with rolling horizon. So right now the weeks are actually just uh, separate slices. Um, and the future work that we are already planning is um, that we want to have a documentation in form of a textbook that we can directly use for teaching and that we actually also hope others will be using. This will obviously be open as well. Um, we might include balancing and reserve markets and we might also switch um, an investment model um, which calculates optimal investments over multi-year periods um, in the future. So thank you very much for your attention and stay tuned. Um, right now the development is still happening in our own GitLab but we have set up a GitHub page uh, for you to refer to uh, for future reference. Thank you very much. And I'm open for questions, obviously, if I may. <laughs> uh, just one question. Okay. Yes. Is there an explanation for why we're opening in 
Actually, I don't know. We, we haven't found out wh why this is the case. So one thing that uh, we suspect is that maybe um, the LP files are not exactly the same. Um, so we will have to check that um, to find out if this might be a reason so that the models are not perfectly identical. Okay, thank you very much. Unfortunately, we're limited on time. I apologize. Thanks.